Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Course Correction. I am your host, Michelle. I have a special guest this week. Um, he is a friend of mine, and he's a fellow podcaster in Houston. Um, he's a marketing professional, and he's an all-around great guy, and he's actually married to a friend of mine. So I have with me today Kareem Sean, and if you keep listening, you will find out more about him and what he's been up to, and I'm going to let him introduce himself for the first time in Course Correction history. All right, so you guys, um, if you want to hear more about what me and Kareem talked about and find out more about what the International Reem Supreme actually is, then just keep listening. Yes, absolutely. Um, So, yeah, um, for those who are listening in on this part, I don't even know if I'm going to cut it or not. I don't know. Um, We tried to record this a couple of weeks ago. Maybe it was last month. And I just didn't record the, the conversation. So, Yes, we end up back here again, and I am talking to Kareem Sean, and he is a pretty cool guy, and I'm going to let him introduce himself. All right, cool. So, yeah, I'm a pretty cool guy. Overall, I'm an asshole. (laughs) (laughs) Nah, nah, actually, I'm a a really cool guy. My name is Kareem Sean. Um, By day, I am a digital marketing consultant. Uh, also co-founder of True Digital Media Consulting. Uh, let me see. Uh, I, I love podcasting. For me, it's a form of therapy. Um, helps to build great relationships. And um, it's a way of entertaining, you know, myself and my friends and hopefully everybody that tunes in to, to, to check us out. But, you know, for the most part, um, outside of my, my day job and the, and the business that I run, uh, that's also co-founded by my wife, uh, Melinda. Um, you know, we share children. Uh, we share ex, uh, you know, she shares an ex-husband, I share an ex-wife. And, you know, we just, uh, we, we go on living life. And I get to talk about it every so often with cool people. <laughs> okay, cool. So would you say that y'all are doing like a really great brand of co-parenting? Um... You know, co-parenting in, in, in our situation could be looked at in a couple of different, you know, ways. Um, co-parenting between each other, um, how she co-parents with uh, her ex-husband and how I co-parent with my ex-wife. So, um, you know, there, there's there's levels to this whole co-parenting thing. Um, I think between us, it's pretty smooth. Um you know, we, we, we really share a lot of the same views and, is, uh, and a lot of the same values as well. So that makes things kind of, uh, kind of easy. Yeah. <laughs> so the last time I did say, oh, we got an echo back there. On your side, I can hear myself. Okay. Um, let me see if I can do something to fix that. Hold on just a moment. Okay. Okay. Okay, it's better. Okay, um, so yeah, so last time we talked, you were telling me that you were about to start filming, um, what was it, an Amazon show? Um, yeah, it's a family uh, drama series called uh, Fight for the Family. Um, we started recording a couple of weeks ago, so I got a chance to get my feet wet just a little bit, um, but I'm, I'm still patiently waiting, you know, my, my time. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of character are you going to be playing? So, um, good question. I play a character named Cochise. Um, I am the lieutenant within a, a, a drug cartel. So basically, I play a half Black, half Latino um, drug lord okay. that is moving into the city of Houston. Um, he has a, 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 a past flame that's been here in the city for, for, for quite some time and um, not to give everything away, but she's in a really good position to help him to advance his uh, his business and help him reach his goals while helping her at the same time. And it, it, and it gets real sticky between them. Okay. So, um, sounds- it's, it's pretty dope. It sounds like there's going to be a lot of politicking in there, like moving and shaking. You know what I mean? Like, are you guys going to have, have to be some hustlers? You know, it's funny that you uh, that you say that because one of my scenes is filming with the with the mayor of Houston, mm-hmm. and um, um, he doesn't actually know who I am, but um, he he's dealing with me. He just never saw me face to face, so this was my first time like walking up on him. So um, 
is 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 very creative. And I want to shout out to Cheryl Ames. She's the um, writer and producer of the of the web series. And um, you know, we we're all just uh, you know doing our best. So it's, it's, I'm I'm excited about it. I'm excited for you. I mean, I think anytime that somebody is willing to step outside of their perceived box, it's really, really great because it gives them a chance to do something that maybe they didn't think they could ever do. But it also shows everyone else that like, you know, you don't have to be boxed in. You can try so many different things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was approached uh, about it a few months ago and I thought about it for a moment and and, and what really convinced me to try it was if this person thinks that I have this talent to pull it off, then who am I to say that I don't like, you know, if she saw something in me that she felt she could pull out, then uh, I think that's cool. And I would welcome that opportunity to, you know, have that experience. So that's where it really started at. And, you know, for me, um, because we are a a marketing company by day, um, my way of pitching in to help is to help her on the back end as far as building an audience. Um, Season one is out now, so you can get an idea of what the show is about. It it has values, uh, it has good acting, and we can only go up from here. So uh, you'll be able to find the show on Amazon, YouTube, Facebook, and all the other different social media platforms. Okay, and what's the name of it again? It's Fight for the Family. Okay. And you can follow the hashtag, which is fight, the number four, the family, um, on social media platforms to make it easy. You can even use it to search on Facebook. Okay, I'll remember that, and uh, I'll try to add it to the notes to this episode. Yeah, you're welcome. You know, I think that's, like, the thing that has surprised me and really just made me the happiest about podcasting is that I get to put my stuff so many times on the internet. You know what I mean? Like my message is out there so many times just because I've been, you know, pushing it, pushing it, pushing it every episode in the notes. You know what I mean? Right. I I love it. I like to see myself on the search engine. I know you know a lot about that. Yo, how how many episodes have you recorded? So this is like um, going to be, I think, the 16th or 17th in the, you know, in the new show, but we did like over a hundred with the group. You know, I was very happy for you in the group. Um, And this is a huge shout out for you, but I was so happy to see you guys um, featured in the Houston Chronicle. I thought that was really dope. Um, To my understanding, the the picture that they got was when you guys did the live show and mm-hmm. I thought that was really dope. And it, it was really inspiring to me, um, you know, because I'm very competitive at the end of the day. That's what, you know, kind of keeps my, my drive going. And yeah. I, I, I feel like, you know, when I see my people advance, it, it shows me that, yeah, we can do that. You know, we, we can take that next step. And, you know, seeing you do the live show really gave me the inspiration to say, you know, that might be, you know, a, a dope route to take or, you know, we, we could do that too. So, you know, when the time is right, I, I would definitely like to step into that, that, that next level of podcasting, but you know, my hat is, is off to you and salute to you for that achievement. Thank you. I mean, of course I just, the girls, like we are actually going to be together at the ugly sweater party. They have all agreed to like sit down and have a chat and just kind of do a little live show like we did at the the first one. So I've got Jocelyn, Sharonda, and Danielle. And then also we'll have a special guests too with us. So it'll be a pretty cool vibe. Like, I just want to always have that respect for them. You know what I'm saying? Like, those are my friends. Those are who I started this with. Like, if I had never done that, I would never be able to do this. And I would never be able to come into this new level of myself, you know, that I had to kind of find when I said, I'll just do it by myself if I have to. You know what I mean? Like I had to be able to say, I am who I said I was. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. I remember um, in, in my on my last pod, uh, when it was just the two of us, We, I, I don't know who came up with this idea that if one of us wasn't available, you know, that we couldn't do a show. So yeah. I, I got to the studio one day and, and our engineer was like, well, 
you know, it's supposed to be two of y'all. I was like, well, it ain't. So let's get it popping. <laughs> and for me, like I thought about not moving forward with the with the episode, but it, it, it almost formed a challenge for me. Like, what you need him in order to do this? Like, you can't hold it down by yourself. <laughs> and it felt good to, to overcome that, you know. And and it was butterflies in my stomach. And you hope you're not looking silly and whack, but. You know, once you get it going, you're going. So, you know, again, you continue to inspire me because, you know, I, I don't have the band with me now in a sense. Yeah, I appreciate that because I don't know if I'm making it look easy, but man, it was tough in the beginning because I was like, well, what the fuck am I going to talk about? You know, <laughs> and, well, it was just like I had this spiritual awakening that I was going through, but I was like, can I talk about this? Can I talk about how I'm feeling? Can I talk about when I'm learning? And then I was like, well, maybe I'll just talk to some other people who have kind of got through what I'm going through. You yeah. know, it's like maybe whether it's personally or in business. And so that's kind of how I got started. But I was like really clumsy at first. Really? And I, was like, oh, I hate this. I don't like the way it sounds. Yes, I feel so terrible for everybody I interviewed in the beginning of this. because I'm like, I just want to talk to y'all again. But um. You know, I just, I just couldn't find my footing, but after a while I was like, bitch, you can do this shit. You know, I had to like pep talk myself up all the way to the point where I was like, okay, I'm ready. That's what's up. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, you know, it, oftentimes we have to throw ourselves out of our car or, you know, um, force ourselves into that building to, you know, to, to move forward and, and go to that networking event or to, you know, rock that, that business meeting you have. Like, you know, the other day I, I was a little embarrassed because I ran out of the house and I forgot my shoes mm. and I ended up wearing Jordans to uh, a, a business meeting. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I walked in and I was like, Hey, um, so, you know, I took this meeting at the last minute and I'm going to be volunteering today and, you know, these shoes are the only thing that get kids to even listen to me. And, and you know, they, they started laughing and it just eased up the, the tension for me um, in the room because I have anxiety. So if I get uncomfortable, it's, it's just a mess from there. I try to, you know, maintain it. But, um, yeah, I definitely feel what you're saying. Yeah. And, you know, it's interesting you brought up anxiety, mentorship and networking because those are all three things I wanted to talk to you about. Cool. I I'm, just, I'm an open book for all three. Okay. I just met with um, Bayou City CBD and I picked up some um, bottles of their oil because I'm going to try it and do like product review. Um, but I was going to ask you like, because that's what I, I use it kind of for coping with my anxiety. I have a few other tools that I use as well, but okay. do you have like any specific um, coping tools that you use to kind of get through bouts of anxiety? That is such a really cool question. Um, you know, I, I got to admit, um, I'm still in the, um, let's call it the exploratory stage. Okay. You know, yeah. I, I think that for so often I, I thought I had a handle on it and mm -hmm. you find out that you, you kind of don't. So you, you start to look for these things. Um, but for me, it typically it's always been music. Yeah. Um, and, and, and music kind of fits me in, in different um, in different places uh, for different things. Like, for instance, uh, you know, while I'm working, I like to listen to something more up tempo. So I tend yeah. to mm -hmm. listen to like house music, you know, when I'm when I'm working because the, the tempo is faster. I'm, I'm kind of in a groove and, you know, I feel like I'm doing my thing. Um, you know, if I'm stuck in traffic, I'm probably something more like. Um, you know, like a neo soul kind of a thing, like a, you know, uh, Anderson Doc Pock type of a feel. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, you know, um, I'm 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 still exploring. So I'm I'm very open to hearing ideas and you know doing counts or whatever it may be to to get calm during those you know uncomfortable moments. Yeah. Um, just lately, one of my things has just been deep breaths. Just like. I'm just going to breathe in some air. And actually, we went to the liquor store last week and they were selling like oxygen in a can. So I'm like, I guess it has, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it has some benefit. 
but you know, I got the CBD and like, I noticed a difference between whenever I was taking it and whenever I was not taking it because like, I think it was a couple of days ago this week, I just had like a really fucked up morning. And so I just took that energy with me out of the house and I was just really like, you know, built up. But when I sat and thought about it, I was like, I am tired. You know what I mean? I need some rest and I need to take care of myself because that's when my anxiety is at its highest. You know what I mean? If I'm Yeah, kind of- yeah. And, and and the other thing that I didn't understand, well, I can't say understand, but let's say, um, um, I, I guess I didn't take it in, into account enough. Like if you go and you Google what is the cure for anxiety like I did, then you'll get some information back. And I mean, obviously you get information back, but you know, what I found is the best way of handling it is through constant exercise um, and, and through therapy. And I, I do see a therapist. So shout out to uh, Dr. Debbie Drake. She's really, really dope. Um, and, and that helps out but the the consistency is is key and a lot of times i I, i'm gonna keep it 100 for everybody a lot of times i do use excuses on not staying consistent with her um but realizing that it's a little more serious than i thought is what kind of rung my bell to be like you know what let's do this every week um let's get back into being physically fit so i've been doing that i've lost probably uh about 12 to 15 pounds over the last several weeks. So I'm pretty happy about that and where that's going. And um, I'm also getting into yoga and meditation. So shout out to, um, <laughs> I might as well call her my life coach. Her name is Artemis Rain. You can look her up. Yeah, I like her. I like her a lot. Yeah, Artemis is dope. Uh, our Healthy Vibes event. I like her. She actually gave Michaela a, a bracelet for her anxiety because she has like, really 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 interesting chemistry really interesting chemistry so her anxious go-to thing is like skin picking it's really kind of gross but so that's what she does so i was really trying to help her find a different thing so like if she felt like she needed to do that she would have a bracelet where she could like play with it instead or something you know right well, we kind of came up with that, I guess, the three of us, me, her, and Camila Thomas. So, because they were kind of there, just like everybody was there on a holistic, we're going to help you heal vibe, you know? Uh-huh. So it was just really, it was really cool. I really, really appreciated everyone. And yeah, she's a really, really cool chick. So you should definitely be doing yoga and meditation. I love it. Yeah. Uh, I believe we are going to start on Sunday. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And actually, I think she is a life coach. Well, I, I try to boil it all into one because she is, uh, she's into um, uh, stones, yeah, um, meditation, holistic health, as well as yoga. So <laughs> I might as well try to zip that all into one. Yeah, like you'll get some good healing up there. Um, you're, you're going to the right place. That's all I'll say. Like when I was there at the event, I was like, you guys are all my healers. You know what I mean? Like if you have to look at the community and what kind of people we have in our community, it's the therapists, the people who are doing aromatherapy, the people who are giving your apothecary, you know what I mean? Like those are the people who are healing us. And I think it's really cool that we're kind of taking a shift and turning more towards the holistic way of living. So are you guys um, trying to like eat healthier as well, like at home as a family? We've always done pretty well with that, um, mm-hmm. especially yeah. during the time. Huh? I said, I know Melinda's kind of a good cook too over there. Yeah, she she gets it in. Um, and, and, you know, the things that I'm good at doing, I'm good at, at doing. So, you know, I, I can never say like, you know, I'm, I'm a chef at anything. I got my dishes. I learned how to make them. I'm good with those. And yeah. I can spread them out throughout the month. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. But now nah, we've always tried to eat um, pretty healthy as long as we weren't eating out. I think even when we eat out, we kind of mind fuck ourselves to thinking that we're eating healthy, but we're really not. You know, right. you, you may have like, like, you know, a fajita or two, but then you're washing it down with this hockey cup of uh, tequila and, and sugars, you know, on top of that. So it, it turns it, you know, real fast and not being healthy. Um, but when we're at home, yeah, we're we're pretty um, 
into a lot of fish, seafood. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm making etouffee tomorrow for for them. That sounds good. Yeah, I remember my dad used to always, whenever he would be the one to cook, he would always make us like really heavy veggie dishes. Like it would be like squash, zucchini, that kind of stuff. And then, you know, he would not make a lot of meat. So I guess my dad was low key, like a, <laughs> I don't know, vegan or something. My dad was really like Rastafari. He was always bringing mm-hmm. home something to us that was like, well, where did you figure this out? You know what I mean? But um, I've been really, really researching him lately because I'm trying to figure out, you know, where I come from. Truly. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because it's kind of the point of, well, in uh, healing the generational wounds that I'm trying to heal, I need to go all the way back there. You know what I mean? And find okay. out how it started, how people be- started being like not being but like in the reaction to your anxiety because obviously like in looking back at how my dad behaved or how he acted it's a family trait you know so I'm trying to figure out where was it that that thing got planted and that's how we act whenever you know the funny thing about it when you look at it through that scope we're like uh, I would have to say we're probably the generation that really woke up and, and smelled the coffee. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think it's in my mom's generation. Mm-hmm. And I think the the times of my mom's generation is more like, well, you know, auntie so-and-so ain't wrapped too tight or right. uncle so-and-so is, is, is crazy. You know, they, they just kind of label, they, they give you a label and everybody runs with it, right? But nobody really learned how to you know, deal with them properly. Like even even for me, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm growing up, I'm having children at a young age. Um, I got married the first time at a relatively young age. Um, you know, I'm just speeding through life in a sense. And a hey. lot of the things that I'm going through, I'm not being taught how to, you know, really deal with them and, and, and be able to let go and put them behind me. So what ends up happening is you end up being, you know, in, in your thirties and you got all this baggage because you didn't properly deal with it and put it away. You just been repressing everything. And then before you know it, you know, you're like, wow, you know, I'm still living with all of this baggage that I never learned how to let go of. And you start focusing on that in order to make things better. So that's kind of my story in a nutshell. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's really the the key of it all. Like I was talking to a friend yesterday and we were just talking about like, even in how we teach our kids about sex and relationships, it's kind of like the awkward, clumsy conversation that you have. And you're like, uh, just be careful when you do it. Like that was me talking to Terrence. And I was like, that was fucking terrible. But <laughs> like, we need to be able to open up those lines of communication and we need to be able to do it early because I think that, I mean, it's a part of us. And whenever we're little, we're kind of taught to suppress those feelings also. So then a lot of that becomes the shame that we feel also, you know, and I think if we could just figure out how to communicate across the board better, we would just all be so much better as adults. Yeah, I I agree. Um, I'm I'm experiencing that a lot, Um, you know, in in my situation where I have uh, basically two young adults um, as, as, as children. And, um, you know, it, it, you, they grow, you know, your kids grow up so fast, y'all. Like for everybody that's listening, um, if you got kids between the ages of like, I'll say 14 to 18, like that shit zips by so fast that before you know it, you know, you're standing in front of a 20 to 21 year old and, you know, they know that they're grown and they can make their own decisions and things just start coming at you left and right. And God bless your heart. <laughs> you find what, what works for you. Because what may work for me and, and, and my children may not work for everyone else. But you, know, you just find your groove. You find your lane. But I, I will say this much. Um, I come from a, a family that uh, demanded respect. And if that respect wasn't given, then you wouldn't be tolerated. So I, I would always start with there first, you know, respect and love and, you know, just try to keep it honest and keep it open. 
and you know hopefully they'll respond you know accordingly yeah i'm really glad that like so terrence just turned 15 i guess it was last week on the first and i'm just kind of glad that i sort of got it before he was able to leave the house you know what i mean so that i was able to kind of give him a good toolbox for adulthood um because i mean you can't go with them they're gonna have to have the experiences but I feel like if we can give them as much preparation as possible before they say, okay, I'm grown, then the better for it, you know? Well, let me ask you this. And and this will probably, you know, put you into a, a tight place. Will you be able to talk to your daughter the way that you spoke to him about it? Or do you think you will have a better conversation with her because, you know, she's a growing young woman and, and you could relate more? Well, it's awkward for me all around, you know, because I have already started talking to her about, you know, what's appropriate and that kind of thing. Because as a child, my mom did, wasn't able to talk to me about it because my mom had been molested. So whenever it came to having talk about sex, it was uncomfortable for her and kind of the same for me. But in knowing that she wasn't able to express that to me, I want to make sure that I worked through that so that if that happens to her, she's able to talk about it. Because then it kind of taints your view of what sex is and what it's supposed to be. Because the person that's introduced you to it hasn't done so the right way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I started talking to her about that and him very early because I wanted to make sure that they had a different type of experience in that. Because I know how much it scarred me to have that kind of taken away from me. And so when I talk to her, it is very awkward because it's triggering for me to have to have discussions like that because I just want to relay the messages correctly because I don't want to, I caught myself telling her the other day, well, be careful or something. I was like, don't say that because that's going to make her be scared instead of just teaching her how to react, you know? Well, I mean, if that's the case, then you can only imagine how, you know, I felt or how a lot of young guys out there might have felt when they heard their, their parents say, don't don't be bringing no babies home. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You know, it's and it's like, <laughs> yo, I, I can't even go home. <laughs> you ain't ever coming to my mama house. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that's that's fear, you know, Um I remember my mom being like, yo, you know, you ever get locked up, I ain't coming to get you. Yeah, I've said that. (laughs) And and it makes you think twice because you don't have a way out. You know, I I think every, you know, smart or or have somewhat common sense of a person would would think to themselves, all right, you know, if I get caught, how am I getting out of this? You know, just to kind of cover that base. Well, let me ask you this. So in hearing, you better not bring any babies home. Did you also get a talk on how babies are made? I didn't get the the all in talk, uh, the birds and bees talk with, you know, with my mom, you know, and, and at the time, my, my biological dad was alive and I, I didn't really get the talk from him either. My talk really came in a, in a, in a, in a way where I had already, you know, I had already showed signs of, 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 you know, being with girls, you know, whether it was, you know, just, you know, fooling around or making out. Um, so my talks were, were a little different, but what, what made it easy for me was knowing that uh, my mom was very open minded to things. And, you know, once we did start to walk over that bridge, uh, you know, she would tell me about protection and she would tell me about, uh, you know, really the, 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 the baby side of it, you know, the, the, the responsibility side of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the, the threat of, you know, you better not bring no babies here is, uh, you know, it's, it's nothing more than, than a, a wake up call, really, you know, it, your, your mom is a mom and, and, She's trying to raise a young man on, on her own, you know, so to speak. So, you know, as a, as a woman, you don't really know what to say to your son. You know, you're not going to come across to your son the same way that his father possibly would. And right. in her mm-hmm. situation, you know, looking back at it now as a as a grown man that has uh, two sons of his own, 
you know, it's I, I, I think she did what it took to, to you know, get my attention and, and to try to help me to realize it's just not a game. Yeah. Well, that's what I was trying to explain to him, because I think he's got some he just feels uncomfortable about it. I think maybe just talking to me like he won't even listen to certain songs. Like he'll have to turn off Megan the Stallion. <laughs> no, I'm like, oh. So wait, wait, wait. Is, is he making you turn it off or is he turning it off? He's doing it. So I guess it just makes him uncomfortable. Nah. So you know what's so dope about that is it, it's really a a sign of respect from him to you. Like you know, I I shouldn't be listening to this in front of my mom. Now it's not to say that. He ain't got it in his earbuds and he don't know the song word for word, but he's showing you the respect out of, you know, not playing it and having those words being said in front of you. Because it's not like he could have a conversation with you where he's being like, yeah, my so I was hitting that pussy in the back. Right. He can't ha- he can't say that. No, we're not going to have those kind of conversations. You don't want to hear my stories either. I guarantee you. Right. So he so he's not going to play that music around you. And, and that's a that's a that's a sign of, of of love and respect right there. I, I gotta I gotta give it up for that young man. And if you had sign effects, I would tell you get that man a clap right now. Okay, I might have to put one in there. Don't worry about it. If I do <laughs> my idea. Um but I want to talk to you about networking because I want to ask you because you guys um have a marketing firm. Um you and you are a marketing professional and expert. So you understand. Um but I was going to ask you, how closely related do you think marketing and hustling are? Uh, they almost run hand in hand. Right. You know, um, especially depending on what uh, what industry or what line of business that you're in. Um, they are synonymous in, in some of them. You know, I, I would say in, in my scenario, um, it's it's how we grow our business basically is is by hustling and by hustling it's a way of us marketing ourselves because we have to be out and about um you know we have to have a a personality uh relationships is always huge and 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 key and you know just always showing up and and showing that you're you're dependable and and if you don't have a uh uh you know, and if you're not showing up, you, you got a reason why you're not. And hopefully, you know, it's not just you and, and your business. You you know, you got a couple of people that you rock with. So if you're really into hardcore networking, then, you know, someone always got your back and, and will show up in your place to represent you and also to represent your brand. I like that. That's really good too. Thank you, Ray. Yeah. Audience, y'all just got gold. I hope y'all heard that. <laughs> Well, you know, for us, we we choose to really give away everything that we can, especially, you know, about services, um, you know, recommendations and, you know, just straight up like uh, we're looking forward to starting to host uh, Lunch and Learns. So this way, you know, small business owners, entrepreneurs, startups, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call yourself nowadays, uh, can learn some of the basic things that they could do on their own to market their business online, um, you know, how to become comfortable with networking. Because, you know, the funny thing about it is not everyone is able to walk into a room full of strangers and, you know, shake hands and, and introduce themselves. You know, you'll find so many people who are very timid, uh, afraid, and they're not sure. Um, of 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 what to say. So a lot of the times, uh, you know, when you can be a familiar face to someone, you you are actually making the room a little bit more comfortable that way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was talking to a, a friend tonight, and she was talking to me about, you know, kind of just what we kind of have planned. And um, well, I guess she's a client too. So I'm like, well, that sounds like business. So I have to check myself real quick. <laughs> um, so we were just talking though about networking and I said, you just kind of got to be able to get in there, make the connection. You know, you're going to build the relationship, but you also have to protect yourself. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of where some of that street sense will come in. Well, you know, I I would say this, um, I I haven't been in a, in a situation where I've, I've, I felt like I had to protect myself only when, 
um, I've noticed that there were more me's in the building. And what I mean by that is, you know, typically, the, depending on the size of the event and where the event is, I tend to run into other people who do social media or other people who do SEO or, uh, you know, someone else may do uh, graphic design. The, the beauty in working with us is rather than having relationships with, you know, three to four people to help with your marketing, uh, we do everything in-house. Mm -hmm. So, you know, working with us is working with a one-stop shop, whether it's from, you know, starting off with your logo to, you know, putting a, a TV commercial on, on TV is something that we can handle. Okay. Yeah. I was talking to another girl. She was talking about doing a commercial. So let me ask you what you think about things like on social media, moving to video, like, I guess the number one way to reach your customers. Do you think there's any truth to that? You know, it's, it's just part of the game. Um, you know, if you think about it, because uh, a, a lot of people consider me a, a, a historian. Um, well, for one, because I like history, but, you know, I, I also believe that history can can dictate the, the future in a sense. So in this scenario that you just painted about, you know, video and, and, and social media. Well, if you think about it from back in the days, you first had radio and radio mm -hmm. was the shit, you know. You could DJ and, and have these great radio personalities. And then came along MTV. Hmm. And MTV, not only can I get the, the, the audio content, I could hear the song, but I could see them now too. And I could do the dance or, you know, I could emulate them and dress like them. And, you know, it, it, it basically killed the radio star. You know, so it, it's the same thing, whereas I can look at your picture and I like it or I can, you know, listen to you, watch you and, and be more engaged with your content. The beauty of the situation now is you can actually, you know, as you know, you can balance both sides where you're still feeding your audience that will like your photo and you're still capturing the, you know, eyeballs that that would uh, would uh, uh, appeal to video more. But um, I, I will say this this much. <laughs> as funny as this is going to say, uh, it's, I'm not always comfortable in front of the camera. Like, I'll, right. I'll do it for a pod if somehow I, I just come alive for that. But as far as, you know, being on Instagram and holding the phone, you know, to my face and recording myself, I, I haven't become completely okay with that yet. Yeah, that actually was like one thing that I was really kind of nervous about, but I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna do it anyway, just because I keep getting like, yeah, but yeah. I have to like, tell myself, this is the message that I've been getting. Like I said, I'm like doing this like spiritual journey where I'm researching everything and I'm like feeling the universe fully and I'm, you know, I'm really embracing all the signs and just being open. So I'm like, if it's saying to me, do the shit do it, do it. You know what I'm saying? I got to try. So I'm like, fuck it. I'll just do it. So now every morning I just make myself get into the routine of making the morning vibe, which I just use a song that I listen to on the way to work. And I just talk about it. And I kind of say how it relates to how I feel or what I've been kind of going through. And I was so nervous to do the first one. And this lady hit me up right after that. And she was like, Hey, do you want to do a morning motivation call for me? And I was like, yeah, but if I had never done that, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to talk to all these other women, right? Hmm. Right. So like whatever it is that you feel that you want to do, but you're a little bit nervous to do it. And even if you have to practice, you know, like it's just about stepping outside of your comfort zone because you never know what's on the other side of that. Like that could be where your boom is. You know what I mean? Oh, trust me. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I'm I'm doing a pretty good job shaking this off. I, yeah. I, I guess what it is for me, and and I hope nobody takes this the wrong way. Um, I'm I, I've I've always figured that that was something. I, I look. I'm just gonna say, it. I never felt that vain. You know, to yeah. to take a lot of pictures of myself or to you know have uh you know again just to be walking around with a camera like. You know, why am I so interesting that you want to see me 
eat breakfast or you want to see me go to three to four different stores in a mall because I'm looking for the cheapest pair of Timberlands. Like, I just, <laughs> I just don't think it's, I'm, 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 I'm that, uh, you know, entertaining. I absolutely think everyone has the ability to be as entertaining as the white folks that are on YouTube. <laughs> Everybody, no. anybody could do it. So like, we're totally going to try. I'm like, I'm tired of you watching them. Let's make a video. Like, yeah, just... I, I, I'm with that. But, you know, when I'm in when I'm in this zone here, I'm, this is my 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 comfort zone. Like, this is where I, I like to be. So even if there was a camera on now, for some odd reason, I'm much cooler uh, under under this than, you know, walking around my house holding the, the phone to my face. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that's why it's good that there are like different avenues because podcasting is never going to go anywhere. You know what I mean? It's just going to broaden because it's so free like we control these airwaves you know what i mean yeah and it's it's, it's going to hurt so you, you was talking about um you know video on 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 social media uh we see a, a ongoing growing trend uh with podcasting um and and it's already starting to affect the numbers when you you know you when you compare it to to traditional uh terrestrial radio and, you know, that's what that's what's cool. You know, the, the thing that we find um, that separates the, the the good from the bad is not really even the content. It's the consistency that people have. You know, so many people bail out after doing it, you know, for eight to 15 episodes for some odd reason, you know, very and I won't say very few, but so many uh podcasts don't make it past uh, the 20th episode you know yeah, yeah. And, and when you think about it you know that's 20 weeks of of recording and that's if you're doing it weekly and you know that's another thing that i would advise people to do if you're going to do a podcast you know just remember that content is king and consistency is the key and you know with that you should be able to rock out yes that was one thing that we learned. Like, even if we, an episode wasn't that good, I would be like, no, we need to post it anyway. Just because we're still going. You know what I mean? It's like, even if it's not perfect, we're still producing some content. And these people aren't listening because we have the best studio. You know what I mean? Like, they're listening because they want to listen to what we're talking about. So, you know, that's really part of it, too. Is like, a lot of people are waiting until they can come up with the perfect idea. Or they can... Uh, get the perfect microphone and all that. It's like, if you're going to produce content, yeah, you want it to be clear and people want to hear it, but at the very core of it, it's what you're talking about that matters, you know? And I would like to think that people still in, like to in, enjoy growing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with their with their listeners and, and, and vice versa. Like, I, I want you to see that, you know, once we, when we first started, we were doing it this way, and then this got better and this improved and you know now we are where we are so i i would hope that people continue to root for the underdog uh continue to support us in, in in what we do if you're truly enjoying it and to share it amongst the people you know that's the way that it spreads around you know don't keep it to yourself you know and um you know with, with that again you know content is king and consistency is key so when are you going to bring in the International Reign Supreme? That is a really, you are really on point tonight. Like you are <laughs> on fire tonight. Um, you know, it, I have not been dragging my feet. I promise I haven't. I think that what I've done with this is, is I put a lot of seriousness into it. And with that level of seriousness came patience. Uh, with that patience has come some some blessings from God. You know, I used to think that these bright ideas that I got were just light bulbs going off, and and they're not. They're truly these these nuggets of of pathways into how I should do this and and how it should come about. Um, so to finally answer your question, we're looking at a launch date of the first week in January. Um, right now, we are currently working on content uh, marketing content um so we're you know doing pictures and we're creating uh 
we're creating pictures from those pictures. So we're, you know, we're editing and adding things. Um, we'll be working on show topics soon. Our list of guests is continuing to grow. Um, so I'm really excited about that. But most importantly, I'm, I'm excited to create this platform that's not in a box and that I could share amongst all my friends. You know, Reem, I think it's really interesting that you said that whenever you had the ideas that they're like nuggets. Because the other day, I just felt like I really understood how it's supposed to work in our creativity and our ideas. And I'm going to tell you what I said. So I basically said that, you know, when we look at, because I know I'm guilty of this, looking at people and seeing them do something that I wanted to do or I, I am doing and thinking, oh, this person took my idea. I, when I was a kid, that was like my number one phrase. Well, that's my idea. But then I realized because of the way the universe works and because of how we're all connected, when the messages come, they're not going to come just to you, you know? Mm -hmm. But the magic is in, we all have a different experience. So whatever I create, it's never going to look like what you create and vice versa. So instead of looking at these people as competition, I have to realize that they're just like me, you know, and that I have to let them flourish and, and blossom so that they can bring forth whatever it is that the universe is asking us all to do. I agree. Um, and, and, and for me, you know, I, it was just another way of, of seeing uh, the picture. It was like, you know, a, another area of it that was shady just became a little bit more lit. So I don't have the whole picture, but I have enough right now where I feel really comfortable and rocking out. And what, what mattered the most to me is there was no similarities between what I'm doing moving forward and what I've done in, in the past, because, you know, and, and it's a good thing, you know, the pod that I was on is still continuing to, to, to record and release content. And, and I think that's cool. Um, I wanted to make sure that the people who've been rocking with me from that point would appreciate not having the, the, the true side of anything, not even being able to, I, 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 I'm, I'm moving in a direction where it's like, you know, I'm not even replacing anything. I'm just simply doing something that's so far different that it's fair and it's cool for you to be a fan of both. Right. And you know what? I'll say this to you also. And then um, you can tell everybody where to find you. But I was going to say that um, when you start, you're not going to get everything, you know, and that's kind of what I'm figuring. It's like, I don't even remember why I was starting between us girls really just to, to be talking. I think I said, oh, I feel like our conversations are so important. Someone should hear them. But really, it was so that I could get to this point right here. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, just get started because you don't even know where you're going. You know, the messages and the, the gifts for the next phase will show up to you. So why don't you tell everybody where they can find you so that they can listen to you whenever you do drop? Yeah, sure. So um, it's, you know, everything is, is, is working. <laughs> so we haven't uh, created the social media platforms for the pod just yet. That's coming this weekend. Um, but in the meantime, you keep up with me, you keep up with everything. So on Twitter, you can keep up with me at uh, Kareem Sean. So that's K-A-R-E-E-M-S-H-O-N. Um, you'll find me there at Kareem Sean International Reign Supreme. Um, on Instagram, I'm Kareem Sean. And same for Facebook. So I, I use stories quite often right now. My stories is my mini TV uh, station. So, um, you, you know, you'll see a lot about true. You'll see things about fight for the family. Um, shout out to Band of the Hawk uh, Underground Pyramid crew. You'll see things about them. And it's just really a way to, you know, continue to entertain the, the followers that I have. Um, of course, you know, we all want to grow. So, um, mm -hmm. You know, it'll be used for that reason also, but also just to help people to migrate from, you know, my personal pages over to uh, the International Reem Supreme Show podcast uh, platforms and, you know, rock out with me and my friends, man. It's, it's going to be dope. 
Okay, well, thank you so much, Kareem, for coming to the show. This is the first episode where I've actually, like, low-key tried to introduce somebody for real. (laughs) Great job. All right, so that was this week's episode. You guys, do not forget that in December, Between Us Girls, the podcast is coming together for a reunion show here in Houston on December the 21st. So if you want to get tickets to that, you can do that from the www.betweenusgirlspodcast website. Um, and we also have some vendor and sponsorship opportunities. So please send me an email at michelle at mscreativeaf.com if you're interested in that. In the meantime, just keep listening to the backlog. Go listen to everything we've ever created. Go listen to everything that Course Correction has done. Go follow me on YouTube so you can see what I'm trying to put out. You know, just be supportive. And if you guys are in Ashburn, Virginia, I just want to say thank you. Because you guys are out there really, really listening to my show. You guys really, you really pushed me over the edge this last week. So I appreciate that. All right. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.